Hi everybody, it's lovely to meet you all today and I'd like to thank the National Forum for inviting the Hecker Librarians to participate in this incredible pilot and this wonderfully inspiring and exciting morning. Um, I've actually called this presentation Breaking Barriers. I thought it was very interesting to hear the non-educators describe themselves as interlopers. And I guess that's what I'm hinting at, is that sometimes as librarians, even though we underpin the teaching and learning process with high quality information, students are always in the library, we empower the research output of an institution, somehow we can be kind of invisible uh, in the higher education landscape. I, I see many reports published at a national macro level about you know, strategies in higher education, and, and very rarely do you see librarians mentioned in that. And I actually personally feel that this professional development pilot has helped to actually break down this barrier, if you like. And in a way, perhaps this uh, presentation is a closing end to the morning in that I think we've embodied here today the breaking down of, of silos between different uh, professional groups within the higher education sector. Um, uh, has already been mentioned, we're the HECA librarians, so we're private college librarians. I, I've been a librarian for 25 years, and I've worked in lots of different libraries like UCD and DIT, but for the last 10 years I've been in Dublin Business School in the private higher education sector. And sometimes we can be a little bit sort of forgotten, if you like, or the Cinderella in the higher education group. And yet there's incredible, um, as, as has been witnessed today with Griffith and, and so forth, incredible professional development activities happening, research activities happening and we have really impressive uh, libraries within the private college libraries and we're a very significant group in terms of student numbers I mean in Dublin Business School alone we have 9,000 students which is three times the size of some institutes of technology so this is HECA which Anne Mangan mentioned earlier is an association of private higher education uh, colleges we have a library committee within that and uh, we work together and we were delighted uh, that the National Forum actually invited us to participate in this pilot and I thought that to me was very dynamic in itself that they didn't just go to the university and the Institute of Technology sector they came knocking on our door on the Hecker li librarians door the private college libraries and, and that was wonderful um, Something that really impressed me was on page one, and I've read many, many documents about education in my 25 years in education, and I rarely see the word librarian. But on page one, so the National Forum got major brownie points for this, I saw the word librarian. Library staff, plural, in fact. And I really liked the rationale, and I guess this is their rationale for inviting us to be part of this pilot. And I really liked it said, the PD framework is flexible, inclusive, and can be interpreted and adapted for academic staff. And it goes on to mention technologists and also for library staff. So that's fantastic that we've been invited into this professional development space. And kudos to the National Forum for that. I recently, and why, and why, I like the words inclusivity and flexible there. Why does inclusivity matter? Why does it matter, you know, if the librarians are in on this and the learning technologies, the technologists are in on this and all the other types of people that work in the profession? Well, it really does matter. I saw this interesting quote in a Forbes article recently, and this is well documented, by the way, in the academic literature, in the library literature, in the literature pertaining to education. And I like the quote, it said, if academics, the heart of the university, do not silo students, then why are student-focused university departments siloed from each other? Wouldn't it be better, wouldn't students' needs be better served if cross-functional sharing of institutional knowledge were common practice within colleges and universities? And they had this great headline, college silos must die for students to thrive. And I personally believe that one of the most powerful outputs from this professional development framework is the breaking down of those silos. Um, this is our librarian group. Anne Mangan uh, was our expert mentor. Um, Anne is actually the co-founder and program director at the Institute of Physical Therapy and Applied Science. She was absolutely incredible, a mine of information, contactable at all times by phone, email, uh, met me regularly for coffee, met the group. She was absolutely incredible. And I'd like to thank Han and also Roisin for their incredible support throughout this pilot. Um, and there was 10 librarians involved in the pilot, all drawn from the uh, Hacker Library group, which include Griffith College, CCT, Hibernia, Dublin Business School, the National College of Ireland, and all kinds of librarians, uh, systems librarians, head of libraries, um, 
uh, deputy librarians, reader services librarians, the whole range of librarians uh, out there. Some of us also lecture. Robert McGen McKenna, who's the head of Griffith Library, he's a lecturer on the MA in Education and Training at Griffith. Uh, David Hughes, who's systems librarian at DBS, and myself, we also lecture on the MSc in Information and Library Management at uh, Dublin Business School. So it was kind of interesting to have that in the mix as well. Uh, so, how did we get started? Well, we got started with some fantastic advice from Anne Mangan, our expert mentor. And basically, the ultimate goal was to create an e-portfolio mapped to the typolog typologies and domains. And uh, Rob, who teaches on the MA in Education and Training uh, in, in Griffith, uh, was invaluable because that experience that he had uh, technically, also in terms of teaching reflective practice, really, really kind of guided us a lot. And he suggested that we use WordPress as our e-portfolio platform, because you retain ownership of WordPress, and it's very user-friendly. And if we, uh, people do move around across the higher education sector, so we could take our e-portfolios with us if we did move on and continue to work on them. And then we had a series of workshops where we trained each other on the use of WordPress. We had brainstorming sessions. We, we brainstormed about you know, how we should approach our portfolios in terms of reflective practice. And so we were, we were busy bees. And the nice thing is uh, that this, this, this pilot in itself stimulated a huge amount of professional collaboration because the word got out that the heck of librarians were doing these WordPress training sessions and some of the other pilots were saying, well, we're not sure what platform to use. Can we come along to your sessions? And before we knew it, we were running workshops that contained faculty from a variety of institutions across the sector, which was a, a wonderfully um, empowering and, and interesting collaborative experience. Uh, again, Rob McKenna was very helpful on the reflective uh, end of things and he gave us, you know, different frameworks. We decided we just wouldn't just record our professional development in any old way, that we would have a structure, that we would describe it, we would interpret it, we would evaluate it. But what would we actually do with it? So if we attended a conference, what do we learn from it? But how do we actually change our practice on the ground? So we all agreed that even though we might maybe design a portfolio that looked different from each other, we would all adopt this framework for recording our professional development. And actually Rob kind of said, you can even just use past, present, future. What did you learn? Uh, what are you doing now? And how are you going to change your practice in the future? Uh, Anne Mangus gave, gave our expert mentor gave us a wonderful exercise to do in terms of reflecting on our educational uh, uh, elements as librarians, you know, the element of our role that's educational. And so we did this kind of uh, brainstorming session, and here are some of the group's uh, brainstorming sessions. So we mentor faculty and students, we do inductions, we, a lot of us sit on validation panels, we write uh, documents for QQI. We're immersed in teaching and learning all the time. Here are some more lecture inductions, building digital capacity. I think librarians have a huge role to play in helping students to be digitally literate, faculty to be digitally literate, and that's a goal of the National Forum. If you've seen their digital roadmap, that's a goal. And it continues on here, you know, we have a lot of technical ex expertise, uh, uh, mentoring, uh, online resources that you use every day to prepare your lectures. We are completely linked to teaching and learning. Here's some of our WordPress workshops, intense concentration there. They were fantastic. We've always been a very close group, all the HECA librarians, because we have our own HECA library committee, but I think it really kind of bonded us together, and it's, it's been wonderful in that respect. Uh, at one point, Roisin asked me, Marie, would you give me a quote for something that I'm writing up about what is your experience of this pilot so far, and of the professional development framework itself? So I'm not going to bore you with the whole quote, but I just felt that it's a tool, this, these are my words, that allows me to apply self-reflection in order to reap the full and practical benefits of my continuing professional development. Additionally, it provides a user-friendly framework to categorize, manage, and disseminate this professional development activity in a consistent and transparent way across the sector. But another thing that I liked about it is that it also helped us to reflect on the pedagogical aspects of our work as librarians. Uh, well, what did the other members in the group think? Well, again, we felt that actually the domains and the categories, you know, you've got the digital, the self, the professional collaboration, we felt that they were very flexible in terms of capturing what we do. And we as librarians do a lot of professional development. We're professional development junkies, we're always at conferences, blogging, journal articles, you name it. Um, a lot of us felt that the professional development framework made us feel closer to the wider higher educational sector. We, we, we felt suddenly a lot more sort of meshed with other professionals in the sector. Um, 
we felt it actually increased awareness of what we do. There's an awful lot of misconceptions and stereotypes around librarianship that, you know, we stamp books all day long. When now we are, you know, publishing journals and hosting online platforms and teaching classes. Um, we also felt that, you know, it, it, it encouraged us to be more reflective. I don't think we have as much of a reflective tradition as many of you would have as teachers. And, and we felt that we kind of tapped into that. And we, we definitely felt there was um, enhanced professional collaboration as a result of the pilot. But most importantly, we also felt that it did help us within our own institutions. Even just saying, you know, if I said to some of the senior managers, you know, I'm involved in this uh, national professional development pilot along with the heck of librarians, I'm kind of very interested. And it even sort of broke down some barriers internally within institutions. Um, we've got, had lots of kind of welcome benefits. Uh, we have a YouTube video there uh, that Rob McKenna uh, created. Uh, he, he's been incredible during the pilot uh, on how you create an e-portfolio out of WordPress. Check it out. Uh, and Mary Buckley, who's the librarian in the National College of, of, of Ireland, incredibly dynamic librarian, really thinks outside of the box. She said, you know what, I think a great idea at the end of all this is that we set up one blog for all the HECA libraries. It's a professional development blog and we all enter our professional development on it. And then we have this one space where you can see the incredible range of professional development activity that we're doing. And that's what we are going to do as an immediate project, literally starting next week. Mary has already been working on this. Um, and the other thing that's happened is, is, is the institutes of technology, some of them are now doing this uh, professional development framework pilot, DIT and others. And they actually approached us and said, you know, uh, we, we hear you've done the pilot, can we meet with you? We'd like to hear your experiences. So here's the benefits uh, of professional collaboration of, of the actual framework already. Here we are at the end of our pilot reflecting and for me, the actual pilot was an important CPD exercise in itself. We learned new digital skills. We collaborated professionally with a wide range of uh, educators and, and, and so forth. Uh, and we also thought about ourselves. I really liked that aspect of the framework, the self, um, and so forth. So I'll just quickly show you a couple of examples, and then some of my um, team members, the pilot members, are going to come up and just say a couple of lines each. Uh, so here's Dimphna's. Dimfna is Deputy Librarian in Griffith College. She created this incredible portfolio. Uh, they all look different, even though they're all used with WordPress. Uh, just her presentation, we thought, was particularly slick, very visual, describing different uh, um, activities that she's been doing. Here was a piece of professional development where she was teaching classes, online resources, and you can see she reflects on it, what she learned from it, what she's going to change as a result of it, the, out the, the benefits of this piece of professional development. But she also had kind of smaller, more reflective pieces, which are kind of reminiscent of the self aspect of this uh, framework, in which she was kind of talking, you know, how am I actually going to record my entries on this? And she even contemplates on that and captures that in her portfolio, which I really liked. Uh, this is Audrey in um, Hibernia. She's the librarian, Audrey Geherty. She's a librarian in Hibernia. She blew us away with the pilot because she was really good on capturing the informal professional development. In fact, she quite frightened us. She had a diary and every time she even had a coffee break and she just got something to do with work, she wrote it in the diary. And we were thinking, wow, this is incredible. And, but the benefits you can see straight away, even books that she borrowed from the library, she wrote an entry on that. It's an ad hoc piece of professional development. She borrowed some books on big data, um, on digital literacy, but she reflected on it. And what did she learn from it? And what was she going to change from it? So, so we really thought Audrey brought an awful lot to the table in making us aware of those smaller pieces of professional development that you do every day and you don't even think about it. Um, and she also actually reflected on the pilot itself. She had an entry up about the pilot itself. And she said, you know, there's no right or wrong way uh, to reflect or to, to record professional development, everybody approaches teaching and learning differently and it's okay. Making time for CPD is tricky, but it's worthwhile. Technology is a great enabler. Start with the student when teaching. Don't be afraid, invest in yourself. So there was just so many diverse and so many rich entries on these portfolios. And this is just a handful. There was 10 people in this pilot. This is Jane Buggles. She's the deputy librarian at Dublin Business School. She's an absolute powerhouse. She has about 62 different hats. 
She's a senior editor on a, on a journal that we published that has recently just been listed on an EBSCO international database. She's responsible for learner supports in Dublin Business School as well as being deputy librarian. And this was her uh, professional development pilot. And she attended the HECA conference. Uh, we had um, people from uh, Peter Casals, all kinds of uh, higher education luminaries contemplating the future of education and she wrote a reflective piece on that. Um, she had great images and graphics as well. This is a journal. We publish a journal called Studies in Arts and Humanities. It's listed on an EBSCO international database. It's cross-institutional. We accept submissions from across the sector, if any of you are interested. And Jane is a senior editor on that. And we have an advisory board meeting. We have an advisory board members, you know, people from UCC, Trinity, private college sector, everywhere. And that was her reflection on the advisory, the annual advisory board meeting. Uh, so, that's basically it. It's been an incredible experience and we feel honoured to have been a part of it and we really want to thank Anne and Roisin and all of the National Forum and, and it's a, a real honour and a pleasure to meet you all. And I'd just like to ask up my team members and they're just each going to say a line or two on the pilot and then we get to eat. That's the good news. <laughs> and thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi everybody, Audrey Garrity from Hibernia College. I'd like to tell my story just in steps. Um, we started in January, I guess on the top step, with a Kickstarter workshop, which most of you will have experienced. Um, very informative, incredibly daunting. Then we took a step down and we were dealing with our HECA librarian team, which was incredibly supportive as we set about actually getting our heads around how we were going to get this and achieve this project. The final step we had to take was on our own to reach ground level where we had to think about what we were actually going to record and as Marie alluded to I did get a little obsessed with them um, circles and red pen in CPD activity and all of a sudden when I hit the ground I was actually running away because I was thinking how am I going to record all of this activity. So thankfully we got back up onto this step again with the team and we agreed on our e-portfolio format and as we gradually did our training and interacted with each other and spoke about our fears and our expectations we felt more confident to progress together and I cannot stress enough the importance of the collaborative element of the project certainly from my point of view. So June came and we reached our show and tell stage amongst the group and I'm sure you all felt similar in that everybody else this project looks so much better than your own. The reality of it was they don't, they all look different and one thing I learned, that's okay to be different in this case and in all cases. Finally then we went back up onto the top step where we started. We had to release our portfolios to the National Forum and to let them fly. And just to finish off here today with all of you armed now with your digital badges, I think we're all jumping off the step and we're going into that balloon. We're the boy and girl in the balloon and in terms of CPD, I think for everybody the sky is the limit and thanks to everyone who's been involved in it. How you Hi. <laughs> Sorry, microphone. How are you doing? I'm just going to say a couple of words. We're all just going to say a couple of uh, points each um, on what we got uh, from the project. Um, my name is Dimfna and Yvrain. I'm with Griffith College. Uh, the point I just want to make is one that's been said all day. I think it's repeated again and again. It's the collaborative nature of it. I just think that was really empowering, uh, I have to say. And one of the things I would take away from uh, this experience is uh, looking at the relationships that I already have um, within faculty and across faculty and having a little bit more respect for that actually and acknowledging that a little bit more and aiming it a little bit more um, and also one of the other things I got from it was be much more proactive in reaching out um, and looking for help and making contact with people for expertise and opinions um, on maybe some of the work I'll be doing and have more conversations there um, and I have to say for me that that was a fantastic uh, experience altogether. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is David Hughes and I'm the Systems Librarian at Dublin Business School and initially when I was coerced, for want of a better word, into joining this pilot, I was initially very sceptical but I had a great time working with my, my colleagues and in other institutions and I suppose as an introvert what I got out most of was domain one, the self. Um, DBS are a very small but very busy library 
and you spend a lot of time doing things, there's a lot of time for reflection. But having sat down and thought about things, a lot of the things that I do are interactions with students and staff, and a lot of those interactions are teachable moments. So, like the NUIG experienced academics, I had a light bulb moment. I'm not just a librarian and a doer, I'm a teacher as well. And in order to be an effective teacher, I need to be an effective learner. And that's what I've got most out of the, the PDF pilot, which I really enjoyed. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Justin Smith, I'm the librarian in CCT College Dublin. Uh, so much has been said already by my colleagues and I, and I echo that and second that, but one of the things that really came through uh, the framework for me was the communicative element of it with, with students. In librarians, you're uh, midway in a sense between faculty and students and uh, very often what gets lost in that is what the students can, can tell you and what the students can, can teach you in your uh, interactions with them. And the way that the framework was designed and the way that we were forced to collaborate, or not forced, sorry, but we were encouraged to collaborate, <laughs> encouraged to collaborate, uh, um, made me reflect on that uh, much more, more deeply. And it speaks to, to the design of the framework and to the excellence of my colleagues on the uh, HECA Library um, uh, uh, Committee that we, that we have formed that uh, I really learned much more about my job and it's a reciprocal pro uh, process and it's an ongoing process so it doesn't end here uh, as we've discussed. So, thank you. Uh, hello, hello, I'm Mary Buckley, you'll be glad to know I'm the last. Um, just to say, um, I joined the HECA Librarians this year and I went to my first meeting, and it was about the pilot. And uh, as Justin just said, it was um, we were encouraged to get in to get in, to get involved, and it was great. Um, I'm just going to finish off by saying, as a librarian, when you start something, you get to the end of it, and then you say, "What's next?" So for us, it was, "What are we going to do after this?" So at our last meeting, which we have a picture of above, we've decided we're going to go with a collaborative blog. So that's what we're going to do. The next step for us as librarians is to have a collaborative blog between us as a group. Um, we're not sure what's to, what kind of form it's going to take yet, I don't think. It's um, the item on our next agenda, the main one. Um, but the next time we meet, we hope we'll be able to show you what our collaborative blog looks like, because none of us had the same portfolio, so it's going to be a very interesting negotiation. Thank you very much. Thank you.